This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Kitty Hot's Trojan, Svezda's Musta S, Ravel's Star Destroyer, some cool tools, and Hobby Boss's Skyhawk. New product rundown proudly brought to you by Hobbyco, distributors of fine model kits from Italy, and by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for all your science fiction and fantasy models and accessories. Welcome to New Product Rundown. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We've got some great kits for you today, starting with Kitty Hawk's 132nd scale T28C. Designed in the late 1940s, the Trojan became the primary trainer for both the U.S. Air Force and Navy. The USAF phased it out in the 1960s, but the Navy kept them in service until 1984. Yeah, it was also operated by more than 30 other nations, and T-28s carried out combat missions in Algeria, Vietnam, the former Belgian Congo, and the Philippines. Kitty Hawk's newest Trojan kit represents the BC version built for the Navy. The fuselage halves show a few panel lines. Most of the surface detail comprises rows of fine recessed rivets. Open or closed, the T-28's big canopy leaves much of the cockpit on display. The kit is cleanly molded with well-defined frames and separate front and rear sliding sections. The two-place interior includes a floor, sidewalls and consoles with molded controls and switches, seats, joysticks, pedals, bulkheads, instrument panels with molded dials, and separate rear panels with instrument backs. Decals detail the panels and consoles. Up front is a pretty replica of the Wright R1820-9 engine with split cylinder bank, intake and exhaust manifolds, and separate push rods and ignition harness. The firewall and equipment bay between the power plant and cockpit are here too. Included in the cockpit but not shown in the instructions are two chunks of metal designed to keep the nose down. They should fit on either side of the nose gear bay under the cockpit. The cowl is broken into several panels with detail molded inside so it may be possible to leave one or more separate to show the engine. Prominent cowl flaps are shown posed open, but I presume they can be modeled closed. Optional propeller blades account for differences between the land-based B and the carrier trainer C with shorter, fatter blades. The wings feature separate flaps and ailerons that should be poseable, but may require minor modification to do so. Surface detail is fine recessed panel lines and rivets. The lower wing has open holes for weapon pylons and gun pods. And the landing gear sprue includes a full set of bombs and rockets to fit. I've not seen photos of armed Navy trainers, so those locators will need to be filled for the marking options in the kit. The rudder and elevators are also separate. The same sprue has the tail hook unique to the C variant, as well as the rear fuselage fairing that holds it. Photo etch metal supplies harnesses with separate buckles for the seats and screens for engine intakes. Decals provide markings for five Trojans, including two Navy trainers, two Warbirds, and a drone controller. The latter, I think, is a B and should probably be fitted with the longer prop blades. T-28s are a common sight at air shows and flyovers. Kitty Hawk's big Trojans make it possible to add one to your display shelves. Next, from Zvezda, we have a 135th scale Musta S. Based on the T-80 suspension and powered by the T-72 V-84A diesel engine, the vehicle known as the 2S19 carries a large turret housing a 152mm howitzer. In Russian and Soviet service since 1989, the vehicle has also been exported to Venezuela, Ethiopia, and Morocco, and serves in the armies of several of the nations that were formerly part of the USSR. Beautifully molded, the belly pan features hatches, structural elements, weld seams, return roller mounts, and more. Similar detail marks the upper hull, which is molded with the fenders. Periscopes are molded open, the driver's hatch is separate, and the kit provides two gauges of mesh to fit the open engine grills. Toolboxes, the exhaust, and other items fill the fenders. Lincoln length tracks wrap the running gear. They have separate guide horns and sag molded into the upper runs, although that's largely hidden by the skirts. The road wheel arms, keyed for alignment, attach to double road wheels with separate hubs. Idlers and drive sprockets have detail molded on both outer and inner faces. The skirts feature sharp attachment details, steps, and waves in the rubber. The turret consists of sides, rear with inset hatch, and a roof with molded non-skid metal plates. The roof hatches can be posed open, but there's no interior. The gun is sandwiched into the front plates of the turret. It includes a long barrel split in half, as well as the recuperator tubes and the mantlet. The kit includes the 2S19's conveyor on the back panel that allows for ammunition to be loaded from the ground. The distinctive fluted muzzle brake is molded in halves, which gives the internal baffles proper depth. Zvez has done a great job on small details like headlight guards, grab handles, and the numerous wire bundles for the loading conveyor. The attachment points are small, and there appears to be little in the way of mold seams. Clear plastic provides periscopes, lights, and lenses for the sight optics. Decals and painting diagrams show three overall green Musta S's. 
Photos show many wearing multicolored camouflage, and the matrix of turret numbers will help you to model just about anything. This is a big vehicle, and the model should make a bulky addition to any collection of modern Russian armor. Ever since Darth Vader's Devastator flew over moviegoers' heads at the beginning of Star Wars, the Imperial Star Destroyer has been a popular modeling subject. Bum, bum, bum. No, no, you can't do that. It's just 3A Naturals. That could be any song. Nope. Cut it out. Anyway, guys, here is Ravel's 12700 scale Star Destroyer. Originally produced by Zvezda, the kit is a part of Ravel's master series, Star Wars Kits. At 12700 scale, this ship is big. Finished, the model will be nearly two feet long. Surface detail looks appropriately busy. The lower hull has more lumps, bumps, and ray strips. All of it is crisply molded and should look great under paint. There are differences between the miniatures built for the various movies in terms of size, details, and fittings. This one resembles the eight-foot filming miniature first used in Empire Strikes Back, including the four eight-gun turbo laser turrets on either side of the superstructure and the engine bells free of baffles. Parts like the rear panel do a good job of replicating details seen on the original model. One of the areas that's been found wanting on previous Star Destroyer kits is the detail on the side panels. This kit crams those areas with shapes, and it's possible to pick out items like aircraft carrier anti-aircraft gun decks among the details. The layer decks of the superstructure look good too with fine panel lines and raised details. The bridge is a crucial part of the ship and there's plenty of detail molded onto the various panels. And the all-important neck. The kit provides a two-part stand with X brackets that support the model. What the Empire lacked in compassion, it more than made up for in lack of color. These capital ships are pretty much overall light gray. The color instructions show light gray on horizontal surfaces and white on side panels. Images of the filming miniature show some panels picked out with other colors so you can get more creative. What this model is really crying out for, other than the defeat of the rebels, is lights. There's plenty of room inside to run batteries, LEDs, and fiber optics. Looks like a blast to build and fly around. Bum, bum. No, stop. Now, you may not be aware of it, but Fine Scale Modeler is selling essential tools. They're available at the Combat Hobby Store at the address shown on your screen. These are the type of tools you should have on your workbench. And we offer only the best because these are the tools that we use. Including Zeron Precision Cutters and Benders. I use Zeron's Professional Sprue Cutter and I'm on my second pair already. With precision points that extend a little further than other sprue cutters and longer handles. These make it easy to do precise cuts and cleanly remove parts from trees. And, like red wine and steak, they pair perfectly with Zeron's Professional Photo Etch Scissors. Designed to cleanly and easily slice through thin brass or other metal, these can remove parts from frets or make new parts from scrap PE. But be careful, those tips are sharp. And if you're looking for a one-stop set, check out the Modeler's Toolkit. It includes the high-precision shear, great as a sprue cutter, and rated to cut wire up to 22 gauge. There's also the tweezer nose pliers. These smooth-jawed pliers are great for holding fine parts and bending PE. And there's the high-precision scissors with fine points that can cut PE parts, tow cable thread, and pretty much anything else that's not too hard. These and other essential tools can be found online at the Kalmbach Hobby Store. Finally, let's take a quick look at Hobby Boss's 148th scale A4E. This kit joins a long list of other 148th scale Skyhawks, and it has some nice features. Including fine recessed panel lines, one-piece intake lips, and exhaust ring. The cockpit includes molded controls and a decent ejection seat. The fan detail is visible inside the intakes, but the exhaust seems a tad shallow, and some people might question the front wheel molded with the gear leg. Should be sturdy, though. Optional parts allow it to be built with or without the distinctive avionics hump on the fuselage. The feature that will raise the most eyebrows is that the slats are molded with the wings. The real ones were aerodynamic, so were extended on the ground unless physically locked up. On the other hand, the kit would be perfect for an in-flight display. The tiny canopy is cleanly molded with sharp frames. The kit provides several sprues for underwing stores, but the instructions show only the Mark 82 and Mark 20 bombs, AIM 9B sidewinders, and fuel tanks. Decals provide markings for two U.S. Navy A4Es, a colorful option from VC-1 and a rare camouflaged VA-155 jet aboard USS Constellation in 1966. The Navy apparently experimented with green camouflage over Vietnam. Hobby Boss's Skyhawk doesn't have all the options that Hasegawa's does, but it looks like it should build pretty easily. Look for reviews of the T-28 and Musta S in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the October issue, our special Halloween spooktacular edition, on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. Finally, let's take a quick look. Stop
giggling. What <laughs> <laughs> was wrong? Finally, let's take it. <laughs> Finally, let's take a quick look at Hobby Boss's 148 scale A4E. <laughs> no, 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 no. Finally, let's take a quick look at Hobby Boss's 148 scale <laughs> A4E. <laughs> it was doing fine until I looked, <laughs> at, looked at you. <laughs>